My guest for the morning, Joseph Niade Koka, is uh, the Greater Accra Chairman of the NDC. Thanks for joining me, sir. It's been a while. Yes. Yeah. I was on sabbatical. You, you, know. you were on a sabbatical, <laughs> really. True sabbatical. <laughs> and uh, we also have in the studio Kuku Kwating. He's a member uh, of the Finance Committee of Parliament, but also member of Parliament for Obwase West. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank All right. You. And uh, well, the Institute of Economic Affairs Advisory Committee has set up uh, a committee to look into uh, what they are terming the winner takes all system, which they believe is inimical to the growth of Ghana's democracy. And so it's proposing an electoral formula for selecting uh, political leaders. The, the proposal targeted mainly at the country's legislature will have only 200 seats in parliament open to competitive election and the <coughs> remaining 75 seats will be distributed proportionally to minority parties and marginalized groups including women and according to a member of the, of the advisory committee uh, the proposals cut across key areas of Ghana's political landscape including the council of state the presidency political parties the national development planning commission etc and the uh, committee is already proposing strongly that the Council of State should be converted into a second chamber of parliament and made an elective one. And that way the council will be completely autonomous and will not be seen as an appendage of the presidency, so to speak. I have to start with you, Kuku Kwati, your member of parliament. And I believe this also strongly um, touches base with the dispensation of democracy and how we need to make sure we have um, the right fort for fortified structures for it. Well, yeah, to start with, uh, well, a viewer should pardon me. I'm, I'm just recovering from some cold. Oh, and sorry. I, I, I sorry. think that's coming across. Uh, broadly, I, I think the winner-takes-all politics is unhelpful. In many, many ways, it's unhelpful. Uh, it contributes to this do-and-die attitude to elections and, and all the wrong things that we do. Not that people would not be selfish if we didn't have this kind of winner-takes-all uh, but it would be reduced. Some argue that the current system is not really winner takes all. In parliament, you have, uh, you always have people from either side of, of the major political parties. That is true, but I think we can improve it. <coughs> the proportional representation, which keeps coming up, especially on IEA platforms, is something I, I subscribe to. Not so much even as a winner takes all uh, a solution, but it provides opportunity for political leaders to reach out to group, to reach out and, and if you like, recruit members into the legislature who ordinarily would be unwilling to go through the elections. Uh, it could also be used as a tool to correct uh, the unbalanced gender, na the, the, the nature, the unbalanced nature of, of our, our legislature in respect of, of, of gender. I mean, you, you have women constituting some 51% of our population. There are very few, far fewer in parliament. So if we have proportional representation, we could by law, for instance, uh, say that a political party uh, must appoint a certain percentage of their appointees into the legislature uh, from, from a particular disadvantaged group. So uh, in that regard, I, 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 I support this, uh, this call for proportional representation. But if I can add briefly, uh, I also think that if we made the district level, the appointment of chief executives of the MMDAs, uh, metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies. An electoral one? Yes. Then you would have at any point, uh, because you can be sure once you, you make it uh, uh, an elected, a uh, fully elected, I, I have seen proposals about the president appointing. No, let's go the, the full, the full uh, extent. I'm sorry, it's a white paper that... W that I, the, yeah, I have issues with it. I don't think the white paper goes on that subject goes far enough. I think we should have a full-blown, uh, it should be a full-blown elective office. And I have no doubt that the various uh, MMDAs would have such a balanced 
representation of, of parties across the country, that in the end you will see balance in people who have been elected into executive office, not just the, the uh, legislative assembly, but executive office. And it would, it would take away some of the winner takes all, because at each point you can be sure that there will be people exercising executive power who would come from various political parties. Uh, that is what we can do to support, if ever it's going to happen, the proportional uh, representation proposals that came from the meeting yesterday. Mm. Uh, now, particularly in trying to get into what the proposals are, and we're looking at just the initials, and then we'll mm. look at concretely what the content are. For example, they said MPs should not be appointed as uh, ministers, etc. But we also get to know like people like you, the excessive force that we tend to put on you as whether you are an elected executive of a political party, an elected member of parliament representing a party, etc. Your constituents come in, the whole of the, of the segment of society is always on you and things like that. Would that reduce all those burdens and even really free people to really concentrate on what their core mandate uh, is? for which they have been elected. But quickly, just let me throw this in before he responds. I think the IA proposal, I've heard it many times. Well, I'm it's sure something it, that has been discussed it was, it over wasn't, the years. I, I believe it's been more than even 10 years. Exactly. I, I think the proposal is not that you do away with the elective system altogether, that we set aside some seats. In fact, for this particular one, they, it was suggested that you set aside 200 seats uh, for, um, uh, for to be elected and then you would have about 100 or, or at the moment, 75 or so being appointed. Yeah, sure. So, so we, we must keep uh, our mind yes. on that balance. Because sure. the cap is 200. <coughs> you keep 200, you get elected, elected. And then you and can 75. supplement it with appointed, yes. yeah. Mm. OK. Rula. Yes, please. Good morning to my brother. And, and thanks for coming to us. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a privilege to have you again. Thank you, and your viewers. You know, we've been there before. <laughs> we've been at this position before. You know, our, our politics now is a hybrid between the American system and the British system. You know, some few years back, we had the parliamentary, the, uh, uh, parliamentary system. I believe from 1969. Yeah, where we had the prime minister. Mm. And then, uh, and then uh, Le Mans had, his, had, had, his, uh, had the ministers coming out of, the ministers were appointed outside parliament. And he lost a budget because the parliamentarians would against the, the, his budget because they claim that uh, they were not party to the formation of the of the of the budget that led to us having the american system the and, and the british system where they, you have a, an executive president and a parliamentary system where ministers are then taken from parliament uh, to run the country <laughs> i think we've tried all these things and i believe it has come to a state that we sit back and look at the way forward some of the findings or the proposals by the IEA are very laudable. For instance, I, I, I want a situation where ministers are out of parliament and so, so that they can... All ministers? All ministers. Not even deputies? No, 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 no. So that they can concentrate on the job of, 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 legis of, parliament. of parliament, you see? And the, the pressure of uh, my brother sitting there having to go and lobby for a road to be done in this constituency, and if he doesn't do that, next time he goes for elections, they'll tell him, ah, we haven't got development, but the job of the parliamentarian is to do what? To legislate. Right. And then you allow those who have to govern so that if, for instance, I'm outside parliament hmm. and I am a minister, the pressure on me as a parliamentarian having, having to go back to my, uh, uh, my, the electorate or, or, or the constituents for re-election hmm. right, will, will, will not be there so that you concentrate on doing your job. You understand? You hmm. con I, yeah. I get your point. Yeah. But you now have a situation where there's a, pr there's, like you asked earlier on, there's pressure on the MP uh, as well as he being a minister. Even it, Actually, it, it, there's it, pressure on the political party uh, elected executives. There's pressure on the political party uh, the, the, uh, elected uh, MPs. Yeah, so the, pre the pressure on elected officials are not as much no. as it's the only one. That so your, the MP yours is terminal. <laughs> Your time will come. Maybe yeah, exactly, exactly. But only theirs is uh, exactly, exactly. Every, routine. Yeah, every week he has to go to his constituency to, to, to go. And when he gets there, he's in trouble. He's virtually always in trouble. He's doing for common fund. Because if he doesn't put up a hospital there or a clinic there 
or some v uh, KIV, KVIP there, next time he goes there, you have a problem on his hand. That's so, what Peter was saying. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so, yeah. exactly. You see, so I think we need to look at this problem. And there's also, they, they spoke about the Council of State. I believe we need a second chamber. And that should not be. So tell me, for example, we have a Council of State of a second chamber of, let's say, no, no, elected. People. Elected. Elected second chamber. Elected, it could second be partly chamber. elected, partly appointed. Because well, the, where we're learning it from is partly appointed, right? Yeah. And then partly elected exactly. as well. Yeah. Okay, so we have, let's say, we elevate to number to about 50. Yeah, so let's say we have um, representatives of the political parties, maybe their chairman and things like that in there. Then you have elected representatives. Uh, that, that, that makes it better for what? Yeah, you know what Governance or you, approval you, of regulations? You, you, you know why I'm saying this? I, I don't get it. We, let, we let, have the first let, no, let, 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 me, let, me, let me explain myself. You know, in parliament now, we've got people who have been there for four terms, five terms, and you name it, right? And they are always under pressure. Because the, 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 the youth of today feels that look, they've been there for a long time and they must move on. So if there's another chamber... And they have the experience. Exactly. So it becomes a... A, a continuum. Uh, you understand? So at least they go for... Just a vehicle. And they, no, because you need... Just a capsule to, to be putting people let, in. Let, let, no, 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 no. Let me give you a classical example. The MPP went for prim primaries recently. And look at the number of good MPs who have lost their seats. The minority leader was very lucky to have retained his seat. He was on the verge of, of being kicked out. That's a very controversial <laughs> statement. Well. Well. That's a very yeah. controversial he, statement. He won't well. No, 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 you agree with me that he was under extreme pressure. Yeah. I mean, we'll be watching the we well, were, he wasn't well. under extreme pressure. Exactly. Though, but your statement is equally very controversial. How? That he was lucky. Anyway, no, let's say oh, oh, he won well. It wasn't yeah, as though he, yeah. he won now. Yeah, but he loved <laughs> it. He loved it to win well. well I think we have, to, election is we, 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 we have to be truthful it's on this. He yeah, loved it to win well. Exactly. He was. No, but you know what? Elected. It's not important. This is my minority leader. In an election, you go and fight it. You go and fight the election. I fought my election. So if you say that, I'll come to you. I'll come to you before the MP. So don't worry. You remember that. Uh, he was he was pleading that the, the, the people are really giving a hard time well, and that and that and that uh, he must be protected. Look, uh, yes, my, so opinion, my, my opinion <laughs> is my opinion <laughs> is he lobbied exactly. to win well. Okay, fine. Yes, fine. He, he did just so. like all of us. Let's all agree us. that he did. You so. didn't lobby to win. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't lobby to Not win. Not to win well. Yeah. Okay. Everybody knows him. <laughs> At least for the time being, he's won. So some of these proposals are very laudable, uh, and I'm talking about uh, proportional representation. Mm. I think that that's, that too should be looked at, you know, because more, 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 some of the minority parties, for instance, PNC, CPP, uh, what the other party, uh, the other minority party, PPP, you know, have got equally some good material. Mm. That this, this will enhance our democracy. And the, and the, the winner takes all the acrimony, I mean, when you go to violations, the, the violence and all these things, you know, because, for instance, if you look at talents, if there was proportional representation, at least one or two of the, the, the those who were second or third, mm. probably one of them will have qualified to come to parliament and to reduce right. the pressure. So among uh, uh, we need uh, among to the discussions we've been having over the last, is it 10 years, is, uh, well, what we have been curling from other countries, making examples of Rwanda and things like that. They have specific seats that they allocate for minority groups, or let's say women, for example. Yeah. And then now we're saying, that this is heading towards a complete sep separation of powers. Hartman also Ajiman, for example, at the meeting, said, well, this also will be a complete disservice to the country because you can't entire, entirely have a complete separation of powers as we have it. But logically, uh, on, the, on the physical nature of it, we need to be having it. Uh, in such instances where we need to be having the allocations, then MPs also not being appointed uh, as ministers. Uh, how how do they then tend to be to be to be very much empathetic to the executive because they, they, they need to be some level of empathy in there at some I mean, that that's that's my belief I, I think what what we need is a good sense to to work for the collective good I don't know what you call empathy in the end we all want this country to grow we want to build the right well, structures empathy. in marketing they say you should be in the shoes of the customer so they should be in the shoes of the executive Yes, but if in that process that's, that's you become the executive itself, you will then, then are you really able to perform the oversight responsibility? For example, in the time of Liman, his budget was not approved. 
because the people they, they that was, that, what the arrangement was different from the current one well, i do i do understand yeah, exactly that. so but that's what uh, but and that is actually what people cite when yes, they exactly. they look at exactly. the, the complete independence mm -hmm. of parliament mm -hmm. i agree to some extent that if you have a parliament in which you have no executive member or in which the influence of the executive is reduced that that power of parliament could be abused and I can say this as a member of parliament. I mean, if members of parliament say that we expect the executive to do this or that, and there aren't people in there who dilute the powers and the independence of parliament, that power could be abused. That's something I agree with. And maybe as we move on, we should find a way of, if ever we are going <coughs> to separate parliament and the executive, find a way of dealing with that. But overall, I am one of those who support uh, the parliament being kept parliament and the executive being kept executive so that the oversight responsibilities will be performed well. As we said, there are so many matters on which the commitment of the majority in parliament, and it is not just of this particular majority. Whatever majority we exactly. have in parliament, in a particular because point in Because the way we vote, we vote the executive, and we seem to always vote more of the uh, MPs. Since 1992. Exactly, from there. So there's always the tendency for the majority in parliament to seek to make the executive's work go as the executive wants. And you have a minority in parliament that is left to do the opposition and the proper oversight, with a result that the president can almost always feel that if I want some parliament to do something, I can always have it. He has so much influence over parliament that majority of people there that the president has to, um, the, who would not be ministers if they were not appointed by the president. Mm -hmm. the, the, and of course, plus this tendency that it is my party in government and I need to push the party rather than supervise them has led to a situation where I think, uh, and as a member of parliament, I, I shouldn't say this very comfortably, but I think the corporate identity of parliament has been compromised. And I would be happy to see how a complete and independent parliament would function in this case. So my instinct, in spite of uh, the disadvantages that others are worried about, my instinct is that we should separate the two. Right. You know, we have we have the uh, American system where the, pre the the minister or secretaries of state, whatever you call them, are not from either the uh, what do you call it, Senate or mm. the House of what do you call Representative. it, Representative. Mm. And it works perfectly well. I mean, you have a situation where even the Senate majority of the Senate is in the Republican hands, yeah. and they, and they are working perfectly well. You see, I think it depends on how we appreciate. The kind of politics that we we do in this in, this, in, in our part of the world, politics is combative, combative. You know, we have to fight for everything. Why? That's a problem. Mm. We not take so. But we're not. <laughs> we're not talking about the yeah. fight. You know. Mm. You know. So so we don't, we, we, we don't we don't. I see you. Too, we we only we only <laughs> we only have a. You're interested in that. When, when you go to parliament, they only agree when that in, 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 in your their benefit. Okay. But when it is not, then they take partisan lines, and we end up other people now, working now, now out. for example. <laughs> well, honestly, on that point, <laughs> quick one. Uh, I have to, being in parliament, look, about 95% of the matters that come to the house, we agree. It is not just on welfare matters. Now, you agree at yeah. the committee level and things no, like even that. No, but, 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 but yeah, I, floor, I, I have been told mm. co conf confidently by you, mm. I mean, not necessarily you, mm. but your, your, your kind, mm. But sometimes there are things that you agree yeah. at the committee exactly. level. And you right. come, and the other side is behaving funny. It happens on occasion, mm -hmm. but broadly, and you can look at this more closely. Overall, the things that come to Parliament, about 95% of them, including, of course, you can talk about welfare matters, we are agreed. The thing is that on those few issues, they are the major politically, mm -hmm. uh, what? Sensitive. sensitive issues. Right. That is when you see the, and that the is disagreements. Where, that, that, that's where one group will want to score some points at one. Exactly. Or so appeal to I, their... Yeah, I think it is not really the case that we are always disagreeing on particular. Right. So, so, so now we're discussing the subject of uh, winner takes all because, for example, I have made the observation that, well, if 
people would want to be um, serving as party people, they are elected executives. If we don't want to see the transition where their party is elected and they all would want to become ministers and MPs and things like that, then that will also help in strengthening the parties. For yeah. example, Adekoka is a very good person, has, is an interpret businessman himself, has, has been a counselor and things, things like that, knows a lot about the world, is very much experienced. He will be a very good minister. But at the end of the day, he will also be a very good party person. But how do we insulate them? How do we take care of them? Because the structures for the parties are not there. So that he doesn't feel his small boy or, or his compatriots in, uh, in the party who has been appointed a minister is better off. Yes. Uh, I think that you will not be the best person okay. to speak of because he is. <laughs> because what, what you mean is that the appointment of people to parliament should be, would help strengthen the parties because the appointments are done by parties. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm talking about uh, how, how do you take care of them in terms of people... Take care of parties. Well, no, yes, we're talking about... Fund, there's a, an aspect about uh, some okay, little bit okay, of funding. Okay, fund, to, oh, okay, funding. Yeah, so just oh. to insulate them so that they don't also have the craving to oh, also oh, do the transition to be in office. For example, Damboche has become... Uh, but if Damboche was serving, let's say, in the party structures up to now, the MPP would, be, would have been better off. But would, I, would, would, I, would, I get you now. Would he be better... Uh, uh, serving in the party currently within the circumstances or as an MP, he would want some insulation as far as uh, the, the yes, I, I, I agree. In, 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 what you're saying is that holding party positions or working in party organizations not beneficial, must so be rewarding so. sufficiently well, to attract the yeah. right kind of Good eyes coming from you. Uh, to attract the, the right kind of people. <laughs> yes, there's some argument in there, but you could make that argument for several areas of national life. I do not think the, 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 the economy, our economy is in a position to reward party operatives. And party operatives are really many. You are looking at national level. Many so you are saying that if you do it for A, it means you have to do it for the downstream. Of course. And of course. Right. If party organization is party. And so mm. I'm not too sure that we're able to provide sufficient reward in that mm. regard. But I, I, am more, I have more sympathies for... Uh, a certain amount of state support. Oftentimes, when we say uh, state funding of political parties, people think it's it funding is, everything. It's taking and going and doling money out to them. But uh, several aspects of a political party's uh, workings could be financed by uh, the state, and we can look at which areas will not easily be abused, and therefore the state must move in there and help. Uh, to that extent, yes, I support the state funding of political parties. But I know Ghanaians, because they view politicians in a way, are very uh, sensitive to mm. uh, this. That you politicians are rich people. That politicians are rich people. That, that you siphon that, the state that money. They, they abuse and, right. But really, uh, politicians in opposition mm. uh, suffer and all that. <laughs> I, 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 I generally think that a certain amount of support for political parties it will be in the national interest. Mm. Adekoka, is that why, for example, we went to Talents, it's just a small by-election. Then there's hue and cry. Somebody wants to win, or a party wants to win. And so you have all this violence and things like that. You have groups that you have recognized to make sure that you tend to affirm your status as the parties that need be would have to be winning. And we're talking about the next election that also will be coming in, and so the stakes really are high. Is that why you do that? Because the parties need to always be in the front line being government? Well, part of our political culture is that somebody must govern a party. And it, it, that's why we decided to have uh, a, a democracy where parties have to be organized and, and, and reach for the voice of the people. But you see, what has happened to us over the years is that we have turned not to govern ourselves, but to do politics from day one. When the president is sworn in on the 7th of January, on the 8th of January, right, we start pol doing politics. And we spend the whole four years being policy. So the nation becomes sharply divided. My brother, here, look at how nicely we are sitting here having a good conversation. But down there, our supporters will see differently. Some they don't they, get it. They don't get it. They don't get that it is a, it is a, 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 what do you call it, contest of ideas that we need to push forward. So it has become a situation where one party or a statement will made by a leader, right, that at all costs, or, be, 
we must do this, whatever the circumstances. And then the followers right, take a cue from it. And when they take a cue from it, that is what is landing us into people now forming, uh, 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 getting uh, uh, guns and cutlasses and marina all, all, all over the place. And also, it starts from our internal politics. Internal, in the sense that if there's violence within our internal politics, and we, the leaders, do not speak to it, then immediately we give them we give them license for our our supporters to go out, and, and because they are taking a cue from us. You see, but if the leaders are able to stamp their authority on internal party problems, these things will not go out. So what you are what seeing? What do we say? Charity begins at exactly. Home. So what you are seeing is a play. So it's a justification for. Uh, there to be attacks, for example, we went to talent, say there are groups, and you, the political parties, have recognized this group. We have Bulldog, we have uh, Azoka, and feed me some of the names uh, from uh, your side. Invis invisible. Uh, invisible. No, that's from their side. Feed me some of the names. Azoka and the admin. Is it only Azoka? I know the for Azoka. Azoka okay. We have invisible forces and things like that. Uh, do we need to be legalizing some of these structures so that we know that they are, they are infinitely Azoka boys in NDC, they are Bulldog forces? We have uh, invisible forces in MPP, and what role would they be playing in the, in, in, in the, in the political electioneering, so to speak? Uh, God forbid we, we, we legitimize oh. uh, these uh, illegitimate groups. But to first, let me disagree with a point Mr. Adekuka made immediately. The people who do violence on the ground, this, are, this is sponsored violence. There are people sitting in their car who provide the resources for this kind of violence. People don't do violence for its sake. Our supporters, let me tell you, most of the time, uh, also sit just like this. When I was doing my campaign, you get to a point, you see an NDC man, <coughs> NPP man eating together, and when you tell them that oh, I'm here to campaign for my party, they say, this man, don't, don't greet him. All. He's an NDC man. They're eating together. They are not as hostile to each other as sometimes we make it sound. So at what point do they become it hostile? Is, they become hostile when there is an activity and people sit in the center. And they finance violence because they want to gain electoral advantage. I think that is a predominant factor in this, in this kind of violence. I, 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 so that's the first <laughs> point of this agreement. The, the second is that, look, that's especially what happened in Tallinn. You see people boldly do these violent things. And they are confident that somehow they will be, they'll, they'll be, they'll, they'll be protected by the state. I have made this point again and again that our, our electoral laws are such that if you go to a, an election and somebody uses violence to gain an advantage and the votes come out, the Electoral Commission says, I do not have the competence to determine the extent to which the violence affected the election. Therefore, go to court. Now you go to court, it could drag for us. By the time the verdict comes, sometimes your, the tenure of the office you're holding for had, had, had ended. So there's a huge incentive for people who are in a position to do so, to use violence. And oftentimes, it is the, 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 power, the, the, the government in power that has a responsibility. Because I have no doubt I, about this. I, I, I want to just pick up. Quickly, let me land on this. <laughs> the government in power, that has a responsibility to signal to people who could do violence. And look, I am in power. I have the resources and the security apparatus to check you. If you go and do violence even to support me, you won't get away with it. For, but, which, you, for which you even, the parties in opposition will agree to, and not think that the government is abusing look, you. I, I, I tell you. In Tallency, mm -hmm. and in many other elections, I've been elections in my constituency, the opposition party is always struggling to counter forces who are being supported by the state or whose activities are being overlooked by the state agencies because they are afraid that their political bosses in Accra would, would protect them. Good. And it, it, it is... I, 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 don't, it, say, it, it, I don't say this so much. No, no. It is happening... Like, I'm speaking like this because... The NDC is in power, and the talency thing happened. I think the the, the government abuses power in talency uh, in a way that is nasty. No. But I do not uh, make the point that it could not happen under an NPP administration. If NPP also is in power, the tendency for people who want to do violent things to say that my party is in power, I will do the violent things and I will be protected. You are saying it's possible. It's, it's, it's right. entirely possible. So it's something that needs to so be kept. We, so this one. There's a burden on government to arrest 
all those involved and punish them properly mm. so that it will be a lesson not just for current NDC supporters on the Ro ground, Roland. but mm. also to the future. Okay, show my show. Yeah, Roland, Roland. You, 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 you are in control yeah. of yeah. the ministries of the interior, okay. of the defense, um, the various yeah. DICEC, RECSEC, yeah. whatever yeah. sec that we tend to have are all under you. Yeah. Yes. That's, it, I mean, if the, if the president should call the IGP, please do something yeah. about this, something could the be done. The, 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 the guns has, were seized, the, the but we don't have the people who, I'm coming. who were coming, coming, transporting the guns. Coming, coming to your studio this morning, on one of your sister stations, or radio station, there was this guy, the 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 the, the, the leader of the uh, uh, Borga Tanga Borga Bulldogs, said emphatically that they were told that the, the treasurer of a, a MPP and 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, Blay, have refused to release money to uh, Afoko and uh, what's his name, uh, Commander Dupont, to come to. Do campaign for that reason, they, they they wanted to teach the two of them a lesson. You understand? On the radio stage, I can, you can so, go and so, yeah. So I'm, I'm just trying to. So your point you are making I'm, is that I'm, I'm, no, I'm coming. I'm no, 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 no. I'm saying that leadership. You see, these people, will, these things will be nipped in the bud. If leaders, if there's, if the look, MPP, what happened at their regional headquarters here, national headquarters here? Mm. The, the leadership did not say anything about it. You see, so you oh, can you cannot please. you cannot you cannot call on government. Please, please, you cannot call on government to, to, to put... But your, government can do something. But government must do it. But, and so the president has issued a For statement. For example, Azoka boys, they, yes. go, they go around uh, shooting in retaliation to whatever. I think, I think, they, could, no, I think they, they should be They couldn't have me arrested. No, I think they should be dealt with. I mean, whoever perpetrates violence. Think, why, why didn't they... Why, why weren't well, they dealt with? Well, the it? police were there. Why did, it, 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 we, we are sitting here, and we have been told that they were firing. Well, the police hasn't come out to say that they were fired. Oh, yeah. Esther, Esther, no, the police, please, the police were on TV saying no, that no, they are arresting people who get killed for the seven. Please, they said they saw them holding them. Look, whose car, whose cars were vandalized? It's our our deputy regional <laughs> and national organizer. And who, uh, and, uh, and, and so who did, was hurt? Did you see any? Did you see any of? Yeah, people. No, did you see any of? There was there was NDC supported. Did you see right. any, by government in power brutalizing no, people to have an advantage in the election? Did you see any of the MPP? Cars vandalized. It's our, our cars. All right, yes. we don't, we'll don't see how that goes. We're, we're, we're hoping that we can have a, 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 a tap on this because we need yeah, really I believe so. some, I some, I, some I, but, but Roland, it is leadership. Look, if our boys, people go on radio and insult the president, right, and not, nobody says anything about it, what, 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 what signal do you send out there? These are the problems that we should talk about.